So recently, while I was speaking on a panel, I was asked, my company isn't purchasing any of the AI stuff. What does that mean for me? What does that mean for if everything is moving toward AI, but my company is not purchasing AI stuff? What does that leave me and how should I go about learning or my career and stuff like that? And I thought that was a great question because it's true. A lot of companies aren't spending the a lot the large amount of money to get into AI stuff for either within ServiceNow or even other uh, AI platforms. Um, but I think it's important for us as developers to learn about AI and see how it can incorporate into our workflows and our processes, even if our company isn't doing so. I remember a couple of years ago, uh, I was one of the earliest adopters of generative AI. Uh, when ChatGPT came um, out into the light, uh, I was using it heavily. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, this really speeds up a lot of the stuff I'm working on. And if people aren't using it, they're going to be left behind. And on the flip side, everybody that is using it intelligently uh, will be ahead of everybody else uh, in their work or in their peer group, etc. And I think even if your company is not utilizing AI stuff, it doesn't mean you shouldn't uh, either. And so I think you should still be investing in AI stuff. I think still think you should be investing in learning and incorporating these things, even if it's not part of your um, company's licenses. Uh, barring anything like proprietary information, of course, because you are using these third party services. But I mean, code is you're Googling things anyways, and you're incorporating that might as well let AI do it, in my opinion. In fact, a lot of people at this conference uh, expressed to me their apprehension about AI, especially in the dev context. And I think that is warranted, but I also think it's the future. And I have heavily learned about all these things like by coding and all the different language models and which ones are the best and stuff like that. And I really think that our devices, our phones, uh, software, apps, Development is moving to the way of conversational interfaces. And so it's important for you to get used to that and to practice that at, or at least be informed. Um, and so things like vibe coding, we're calling it conversational coding at ServiceNow, but vibe coding is becoming something much more ingrained in all of the things that we do. Um, and that's reflecting the conversational interface of generative AI models. And so what is vibe coding? And I, I, it's funny because I was hosting a session and maybe like 2% of the crowd even knew what vibe coding was uh, really in the crowd. So it was surprised me that still a lot of people still don't know what it is, but it's likely the future of how a lot of our work will be done. Um, at the beginning of this video, you saw that skit of one developer talking to uh, a different developer, maybe a junior developer, asking them to make a, a widget and giving instructions and then coming back and saying, Hey, that's great. Can you do this to it now? Hey, that's great. Can you add this to it? Um, hey, this is this is great, but you can you edit this part? It, that's basically vibe coding. If instead of talking to a person writing it, you're basically talking to an AI and it's generating that code for you. That's what vibe coding is. 